the hate, we're gonna be canoeing down a raging river in search of valuable gems. Watch out for the waterfall. It's Niagara the board game. What are you, a cat? So this is what it looks like on the board, Niagara the board game. And first thing to note is that this board is 3D. It's got these ridges right here that kind of direct the river flow for these translucent river discs that contain the canoes and the gems in those canoes. Follows along this river path here with this fork in the river going either to the left or to the right. And these are the gems that we're gonna be collecting throughout the course of the game. There are five different colors. You've got pink, blue, yellow, white, and purple. And there are canoes right there. Each player gets two different canoes. There are three extra transparent discs that we'll be using along with these seven paddle cards that each player uses throughout the course of the game. And the way the game works is that the first phase, there are four phases each round, and the first phase, each player is going to play one of these paddle cards. And they're gonna do this secretly, and they're gonna put it face down on top of each of these spaces here. And so we're just gonna go ahead and pretend like each player is picking one, putting it in their own rectangular space. And if you'll see, green player here has the life preserver, and that means that they are our first player. And so after everybody has put down a paddle card, then starting with the first player, they are gonna flip over their token, and they are going to First, in the first turn, they are going to put out one of their boats starting at the dock here. And they're gonna move the number on their paddle card. And so in this case, that would be three. One, two, three. Okay, and then play would continue around the board in a clockwise fashion. And so red would go one, two, or excuse me, that would be uh, one, two. And then uh, next player, uh, Brown, which Brown has a token right there. And Brown would go one, two as well. And yellow is gonna go six. Now yellow player is gonna do something different because one of the things you can do is move some of what's on your card here. You always have to move the full extent of whatever's on your card, unless you're gonna do here what yellow player does, which is, let's say yellow goes one, two, three, four, and decides to stop right there. And with the last two points on yellow player's six card, they are gonna use those last two points to pick up a gem. Now it does take two points of movement to do that. And so that is why yellow player is only moving four. And so then we'll move on to the blue player and the blue player is going to move four and we're gonna say that the blue player decides to go one, two, and three, four. Okay, they're gonna pick up a purple gem there. And so after everybody moves, then um, we are going to move on to the uh, third phase, which is the weather. And so if you look over here, we've got a weather track um, with a cloud, and the cloud starts the game on zero. And so uh, wherever that cloud is at, you're gonna take that number, so in this case is zero, if the cloud moves one space over, it'd be plus one, one space back would be negative one, at the far end of the left side it is plus two. So you're gonna add that number to whatever the lowest card played that round was, which in this case we have both the red player and the brown player who played two. So at the beginning of the game, if no one played any clouds, the cloud starts on zero, it stays on zero. Um, we're going to add zero to two, which is two. And what that means is, is we're going to take two of these translucent discs, and we're going to place them behind this rope here, and we are going to push it until this new disc is fully past the rope. And so pushing, 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 and as you can see, all the other discs are moving forward too.
And what that did is, is it cost, caused one of these discs on the far end here to fall off the river. And all the boats, the canoes, have now gone one space further down. And so now we have to add the second disc. And I'll let you look at the boats as I do this this time. And now it's going down on the right side of the fork. And so usually, but not always, um, they alternate. One comes down on the left, one comes down on the right. So anyway, that's how the first turn would be. And then we would pass the first player token to the next player. And it would be red player's turn to go first. Now, the next thing to also notice is, is that whatever card each player played stays on the board. And you are now not able to use that card until you have played all the cards in your hand. And so you have to play all seven before you can recycle through your cards. One of the cards, if I can find one, is a cloud. And what a cloud will do is rather than moving any of your boats that round, it will have you move the cloud. And you can move the cloud one space, either to the left or to the right, However, if you are fully all the way on one end of the side of the track, you cannot move it off the track, so you are only able to move it uh, one space back over. And so that's what the cloud does. Uh, and in the event that you know, everybody decided to play clouds, which would be pretty rare, um, the cloud would not move. It would just simply move the river, whatever the number is, which in that case, it would just be zero. So that's pretty much the game. Um, the other things to take note of is you do have two canoes, and um, you, if you have one canoe in the water, you have to move that canoe. You are able to move your other canoe that's on land, and you would move that the uh, same amount of movement. And so, uh, again, let's say a yellow player played their six. Well, this canoe that they have here in the water is going to move six, and it has to move all in one direction, either all the way up the river or all the way down the river. You can't go back and forth in the same turn. So in this case, yellow player is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And when you get past the rope, you pull that canoe back onto land and you unload. And that gem is now with the yellow player. And then they could also put their other canoe into the water because it started out of the river at the beginning of the turn. And it will move six downstream because it's starting at the top of the river. So one, two, three, four, five, and we'll just say six to go right there. Um, and so that's how that would work. Now, uh, if you have both canoes in the water, then you have to move both. You don't get a choice. Um, and again, you do have to use the full amount of movement. Um, the only time you get to waste the movement is if it is coming upstream and then you're going to pull it up on land at the end of the stream. Uh, now, there is stealing in this game, which is one thing to take note of if you're playing with a non-gamer um, that it's kind of a take that type uh, rule in this game and so that is something to be mindful of they may not like that but how that works is is that uh, you have to be moving upstream with an empty canoe and you're ending your movement on a space with a canoe that already has a gem in it so in this case let's say that the yellow player here decides to play a one okay they're gonna play a one and they're gonna move this yellow canoe right here one space upstream, because again, it has to be going upstream. You cannot be going downstream if you're gonna steal. And the yellow player ends their movement in this space right here, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, the blue player does have this purple gem, and so the yellow player now steals that purple gem. And the blue player would be pretty, pretty ticked about that. Um, and so that's how that works. Um, the blue player would not be able to just steal that gem right back because, again, you have to move and you have to end your movement in a space with a canoe that has a gem. So in this case, the blue player would have to move and they would either move up or down. And um, let's say they move there and there's no canoe 
with a gym in that space, so they would not be able to steal anything. Now, that being said, if uh, the green player decided that they had the same thought in mind, the yellow player just beat them to it, and they played a one, well, guess what? Now the green player could steal from the yellow player. And so that's kind of how that works. So there is a little bit of uh, back and forth when it comes to that stealing. So you do have to be mindful of that. Uh, so that's pretty much the game. Um, there are a few other rules, but I'll leave you to figure that out. Uh, the game ends basically when one player is able to get uh, seven gems of any kind of color or five different gems. So that would be getting one of each color. Or the other way the game can end is if you get four of the same color. The first player to do that um, wins the game. You do finish out the full movement of that round in which a player is able to achieve that. And so it is capable um, for there to be a tie. And in this case, uh, as is not the case with most games, there is no tiebreaker uh, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, and so it is possible for multiple winners to win. Um, and that is how you play Niagara. Okay, so here we are having played a game now. Um, we're sitting at the table here. Uh, Locke, our son, he's eight. He's sitting there at the head of the table. He played along with our daughter, Anna, who is five. And Locke pretty well understood it. The game says that uh, it is recommended for ages eight and up. And he understood, in fact, he actually won the game. He uh, found it quite enjoyable, got really excited there on his last turn once he understood that he was uh, going to win. Anna, on the other hand, I think she needed quite a bit of help, uh, but that's okay. Um, so now we're gonna go over our thoughts on the game and just kind of what we uh, felt about it. Uh, and so for me, uh, there were a few things that I enjoyed. Uh, there is a novelty factor of pushing the discs down the river and watching the boats move. Uh, our daughter Anna actually was the only one who lost a boat, uh, and that was uh, entertaining uh, to kind of see that happen and her to kind of see, oh no, I lost a boat. Uh, she didn't lose her cool too bad, but uh, uh, that was fun. Um, another aspect that I enjoyed was uh, that you can get gems really quickly in this game. I started off terribly. I, I My first whole uh, run through with my cards, I did absolutely nothing. I felt like I wasted all of them. But then I, my second turn through, I got four gems and was very close to winning. Locke just happened to beat me to it. Uh, some of the things I didn't enjoy, it's pretty random. Um, you are kind of at the mercy of what everyone else does. Uh, and you know, you can have a game plan going into it, but if somebody plays different cards, that game plan is shot. And so there is a random factor to that. That can be a good thing at times because it does cause you to have to change up your game plan. Um, but you know, if you are someone who's very strategic and has to kind of, uh, have a plan and stick to that plan, this probably won't be the game for you. Um, it is a game that I kind of worry if it will get stale uh, playing it too many times. Um, you do have to have the right crowd as well. And so that's just a couple of things coming from a gamer's perspective. Uh, Sam, what do you think? What were some of your thoughts about the game? I like the game. I think it was easy. It was straightforward. Um, you kind of understand the gist of it pretty quickly. Your goal is to get so many gems, go to and then get back to your spot. Um, I liked it because typically when we play with the kids, we pair up and you have to help them a lot. And I think in this game, I didn't have to help our daughter with every move. I just had to make sure she was staying, um, she was paying attention. I, I do think you're at the mercy of the other players, but at the same time, it's easy to get back on track. So it's not like one player's move will um, completely destroy the game for you. You can continue on and um, and win. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was pretty easy. Um, I like that the rules didn't take too long because that really typically irritates me when it takes 45 minutes to set a game up and to learn the rules, but this one was pretty easy um, to learn quickly. 
Okay, so what didn't you like about it? I guess I didn't like that. Um, you know, you could be at the end, you could be um, close to getting one of your gems, and then somebody could, the lowest number could be a five, and you'd have to move five um, spaces spaces back, um, and then you could potentially lose a boat. So, and that as in that case, it really isn't anybody's fault. It's just how the cards fell. Right. Um, nobody was trying to, but I guess that's good too, because it's not like they're intentionally, you're not getting mad at somebody. So it's not intentional that they're trying to make you lose, but it's just how the cards fell. Right. And you're talking about the weather there with the river being, uh, dictated, uh, by what cards people play, uh, the lowest number of that round uh, determines how how many discs push down the river there. So ultimately, um, with this game on a scale of one to ten of love and hate, uh, I give this game about a six. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, in the middle on it. I would play it again. Um, I will keep it for now. Something that is enjoyable with the kids. Um, it's something that I would like to get to the table once in a blue moon. Uh, where are you at, Sam? Or do you love this game? Do you hate it? Is it somewhere in the middle? I'd give it about an eight. I think it's easy with the kids, which is always a much easier than when it's not, when you can't play with kids and you have to get them doing their own thing so i think it i'll definitely give it an eight because it's easy for everybody to play it's easy to understand and it has a fun aspect to it with the waterfall well there you have it guys this is a game i think that we will keep it is a game that i think could be good with non-gamers might be a little bit too basic for real gamers but that's okay all right guys well there you have it we'll catch you next time on 